You know that feeling you get when you pull up to a shoot and you're, you're excited to get started and you're thinking maybe, maybe this one's a portfolio shoot. And you walk inside and in one part of the room it's, it's fluorescent lighting and in the other part of the room there's, there's tungsten lighting. And you say to yourself, well, clearly someone in this house is being abused. And that person is me. Well, fret no more because today we're going to tackle three clips in Adobe Premiere with some selective color grading to mitigate this problem. And maybe, just maybe we can save this portfolio shoot tool. Let's go. Hey. All right, so we've got our first clip loaded up. And the first thing I want to do is click on my color tab. And I like to have my Lumetri scope next to my effects panel. So I'm going to click and drag this over here so I can actually see both my effects and my Lumetri scope at the same time. And just a quick note about what you're seeing here in the Lumetri scope window. This shows you your exposure value from zero, which is complete black to 100, which is complete white. So if you were to drag the exposure down, you can see the values drop and vice versa. A good rule of thumb that I have is to have the majority of my exposure maybe be just above 50 or so. So if you're ever color grading and you see your lumetriscope hovering around, you know, this area, it's clear that you're underexposed. Also, this scope is a literal representation of your frame. So you can see over here that our window is slightly blown out. And if I move the playhead around, you can actually see the Lumetri scope moving along with it. All right, onto the problem at hand. So this is shot in log format and I've already got my exposure and contrast set, but we've clearly still got some different color temperatures going on in this frame and it's burning my eyeballs just looking at it. So here's how we fix it. First, we're gonna click on down here on HSL secondary. HSL secondary will allow you to selectively isolate colors and adjust their exposure as well as their color. So the first thing you wanna do is select our eyedropper tool, then click on the area that we wanna change or click on the color region that we wanna change. And then we're gonna hit this checkbox right here and that's gonna show us our selection. So sometimes the color picker won't do a great job at isolating the area we're trying to work on. And in this case, you're gonna to need to manually adjust values until you've selected the area you want. So I'm just gonna tweak the hue, saturation, and luminance values so I can refine my selection. So that looks pretty good. And once we've got a good selection, we can feather it with the blur slider so that whatever adjustment we make will blend better with the rest of the frame. Now this isn't something where you can write down this value and use it again and again. This value is gonna change from scene to scene. All right, so now we can uncheck this box and we're ready to start making adjustments. So for this one, I'm gonna change the overall color in the mid-tones toward blue or away from yellow. Now you don't wanna push this too far, you'll end up with something like this and that's gonna look just as bad. Sometimes less is more. And if you're finding that you're not able to push the color far enough without it starting to look bad, an additional adjustment that I like to do is to desaturate the color just a bit. And this can help blend it a little better. Again, you always wanna be careful not to push these colors too far or the footage will start to fall apart. You can also click on here, click on this and do some exposure adjustments, although I don't think it's really necessary to do in this particular clip. So I'm gonna double click this and put it back. But this can definitely be handy in certain scenarios. So let's take a look at the before and the after. And if you toggle back and forth and it looks like maybe you went too far or you didn't go far enough, um, you can just keep refining that selection. So here's our second clip. I actually exposed for the bedroom on this one, but I wanted to lead into it from the hallway and we're actually passing the laundry room here. And this actually brings up a good question. What do you decide to shoot or, or not shoot when it comes to real estate video? Is, is a laundry room worthy of making it into a video? Have you shot a super sexy laundry room is I guess what I'm saying. I don't think I have, but uh, I'm not a big fan of laundry. So let me know if you have like a hard no to certain things when it comes to shooting real estate. I need to know these things. So unfortunately, since I exposed for the bedroom, since that was my point of interest, I ended up sacrificing the exposure in here. 
Now this isn't the worst thing in the world, but I do think it could be better. So again, we use a color picker to make our selection. And click here to reveal a selection. And then adjust the coverage area. And blur it just a bit. And then again, I'm just gonna pull the colors away from yellow. And then I'm gonna desaturate it a bit. And for this one, I think I am gonna try to bump up the exposure and see if I can match things up a little better. And that looks pretty good. So here's the before. And here's the after. All right, and then one more clip. And just a quick little shameless ask. If you do like this video and you wanna see more like it, I would love it if you would subscribe. So in this clip, my color balance was way off in the kitchen. Um, I'll kind of show you what I had to do to fix that. So you can see it's pretty yellow here, so I had to pull my temperature over to blue, but when I correct it, the walls at the beginning of the clip look not so great. I'm assuming my auto white balance didn't adjust from room to room on this clip. So I'm gonna get my selection. And blur it just a bit. And then in this case, I'm actually gonna warm up my selection just a bit. Let's see if we can bring up the exposure just a little bit. And there you go. There is the before and the after. Hey, if you're interested in more tips on shooting or editing, you can check out one of these videos right here. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't smash it. That only works for Peter McKinnon. Thanks. I'll see you.